Hi, my name is Trey Bishop, and I am the Tax Law Training Director here at the South Carolina Department of Revenue. Today I'm going to be going over the legislative updates that pertain to income taxes, sales and use taxes, and miscellaneous taxes. Before we get started, um, a little note here, any provisos mentioned are set to expire on June 30th of 2024 unless they are reenacted by the General Assembly in the next legislative session. First up is going to be income taxes. We're going to start off with conformity. Um, South Carolina income tax laws will conform to the Internal Revenue Code through December, of, December 31st of 2022. All right, let's look at the rate reduction here. So previously we had a top marginal tax rate of 6.5%. The reduction to 6% is being phased in over six years, so in 2023, the top marginal tax rate is going to be 6.4%. Right, we did have a bracket collapse, so the six tax brackets previously have collapsed down to three brackets. You'll notice that the 2023 bracket amounts are zero to $3,000. $329. The second bracket is $3,330 to $16,679. And the top bracket is going to be $16,680 and above. All right, so next up is going to be withholding. Um, any income tax withheld provision that requires Withholding at 7% means withholding at the maximum income tax rate. And remember, that again has been reduced this year to 6.4%. So where you would have taken 7% previously, you will now be taking 6.4% for withholding on prizes or winnings of $500 or more, withholding on rent or royalty payments to non-residents, withholding on distributions by trust or estate to non-resident beneficiaries, withholding on purchases of real property from a non-resident seller, withholding on wages paid to an individual who fails to provide a taxpayer identification number or social security number. All right. Next is the Educational Scholarship Trust Fund. Any funds received are not subject to South Carolina income tax for the scholarship student or the student's parents. All right, the South Carolina Dependent Exemption. In 2023, this is going to be increased to $4,610 per exemption. You're going to take this subtraction on line W of the SC1040 and you'll also use that same amount if you're claiming the dependent under six deduction and you'll take that subtraction on line T of the South Carolina 1040. All right, the earned income tax credit. This is a non-refundable tax credit, and it, but it is based on the federal income tax credit. So for state purposes, it is non-refundable. You'll need to include the Schedule TC-60 and the SC-1040 TC. This one has been phased in over the last six years. This is going to be the last phase of the earned income tax credit. So it has topped out at 125% of the federal earned income tax credit and that will be from 2023 and moving forward. The two-wage earner credit, this one has also been phased in over the last six years. Moving on forward from 2023 and beyond, the earned income maximum has increased to $50,000 with a factor of 0.7%, which means that the maximum allowable credit now is going to be $350. Just a reminder, you can only claim this credit if you have a married filing jointly filing status. All right, the new proviso 
increases the credit limit to $350 for the classroom teacher expense credit. This is a refundable tax credit and you will need to complete the I-360 and submit that with your return if you are claiming the classroom teacher expenses credit. All right, next up is going to be the sales and use tax portion. All right, first up is the skate card. So effective July 1st of 2022, the skate cards replace the agricultural exemption certificate. The proviso states that the Department of Agriculture can charge up to $24 for a three-year skate card. It also authorizes that the Department of Agriculture can charge $5 for any replacement skate cards. All right, a new budget proviso allows chemicals and oils, including grease, lubricants, and coolants to be considered exempt fuels as long as they are used in an exempt farm machine and they are essential to the functioning of the machine. So that is a new proviso. Another new budget proviso allows artists, craftsmen, and hobbyists who only make sales no more than four times a year at a fair, festival, carnival, or event operating less than 12 consecutive days is not engaged in business or making sales at a retail location. It does not apply to anyone who is engaged in the business of making sales at retail locations and are required to have a retail license. All right, last is going to be our miscellaneous taxes. First up is the accommodations tax. So the local accommodation taxes may be used for development of workforce housing. It may not use more than 15% of annual accommodations tax revenue for development of workforce housing. You must include programs to promote home ownership. Submit housing impact analysis before the South Carolina Department of Revenue can disperse accommodation taxes for development of workforce housing. All right, so some changes to the alcohol sales at airports. We have approved that businesses may sell alcoholic liquor by the drink in South Carolina airport terminals. Um, the drinks can be consumed throughout the airport terminal. All right, next is going to be craft breweries. Breweries can sell beer for on-premises consumption if produced on the same premises or transferred by a brewery that operates under 100% identical ownership. Now breweries can sell up to 864 ounces of brew to an individual for off-premises consumption. Before this, the maximum for off-premises consumption was 288 ounces. And any beer that is going to be sold in kegs must comply with the keg registration requirements. All right, so new for our tobacco enforcement. The South Carolina Department of Revenue is responsible for administering penalties for tobacco retailers who violate rules for sales of tobacco products. The South Carolina Department of Revenue is going to share the results of the SLED compliance checks. The tobacco retailers are required to notify the South Carolina Department of Revenue if they sell or distribute tobacco or tobacco products. Now they were supposed to do so by August 15th of this year. We did send out letters to everyone that had a active retail license so that we were aware of this, but hopefully, hopefully everybody is in compliance since they were supposed to let us know by August 15th of 2023. All right, here's the new proviso. Um, the new proviso requires that admissions tax revenue from admissions to a college athletics event be allocated back to the school to be used to provide financial support to student athletes. All right, so here's our 3% reduction on the interest rate of tax refunds. So the interest rate for tax refunds continues 
to be reduced by 3%. The first 2% of the reduction is going to be allocated to the Guardian Ad Litem program. And the other 1% is going to go to the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee on Children and the Department of Juvenile Justice. Finally, a budget proviso allows DOR to require a statement subject to penalties of perjury instead of a statement under oath, which allows licenses and permits to be filed electronically. All right, now here's my contact slide. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'll do my best to get an answer for you.